Hey, what's good, Fear of the Walking Dead fans? This is the Comfire Crew, and we're here to talk about Season 2, Episode 6. All right? We've got eight favorite moments that we're going to talk about real quick. I'm Comfire Rich. I'm Comfire Nate, and the first moment is the way it opens. It's this kind of you're not sure what's going on. You have this priest. He's talking to his people in his church, and I love the whole, like, religious and apocalypse kind of, you know, parallels there. I love that because it always kind of makes you remember just exactly how uh, most people will react during an actual apocalypse. You know, they're probably they're going to pray. They're they're worried. They're scared. And he's kind of giving them this speech, you know, trying to get them built up for like it seems like a fight. And I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Um, they they come out to the courtyard and a truck pulls up and it's Thomas Abigail. OK, we know him from flashbacks with Strand. He comes up. He tries to talk to him. And all of a sudden, dude, they all just start bleeding out of their eyes and falling over dead. Immediately, I get really excited because I'm thinking, holy crap, are we going to find out some type of like how this whole outbreak started? Like that, for whatever reason, my mind went there. I was like, oh, wow, we're going to see the beginnings. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I didn't know what was going on. When they started bleeding from my eyes, I was like, is this the like I, I was I was just lost and. Um, of course, when the guy was just like, Celia, and I was like, all right, who, who's Celia? Who's this crazy lady? Uh, turns out she ends up poisoning all of them. And I was like, that's cold, bro. You poisoned a church. You going Yeah, and it's a bunch of kids, too. That was pretty messed up. So, um, yeah, that's how it opened up. You know, hey, get you, I guess it gets kind of hooked because you're curious what's going on. Who's this crazy lady poisoning all these people at a church? But anyway, let's move on to favorite moment number two. And this one you have uh, uh, Salazar in the group. They're hiding downstairs because... The guy's coming up on the boat. Here's some gunshots. Um, Salazar goes up in the middle of a gunfight, and he tells everybody, hey, stay here. And he just picks up this knife. I wanted that knife, by the way. That knife looked kind of cool. I felt like I needed to buy, like, a combat knife like that. But he just goes around. He's just he's stabbing all dudes in the head. And I like it because they're, they're caught up. They know what's going on. Um, able to think under pressure, hey, these bodies are down. We don't need them coming back. I've got to get out here and take care of them ASAP. And he does that in the process. He finds this strange coin. And he knows what this coin means or represents. He has to because of the way he looked at it. It wasn't like, what is this strange coin? He threw it overboard. He didn't have anything to do with it. I don't know if it, it ties to his past or, or what is up with this coin. But I feel like it's going to be significant later on. Yeah, it was. Uh, you had Luis, the guy who had helped him in the, uh, to get across, sort of. He's laying there dying. He pulls out the coin and he wants them to give it to his mom. Uh, Daniel's like, I don't think so. Flips it over. So it's it's a very weird looking coin. It's got an owl on it. It's kind of really, it's creepy. I mean, it's, it's, it looks really creepy, the coin does. So it's interesting. It definitely looks like there's something to do with that. Um, but moving on to favorite moment number three. And that's when the group actually gets on land and makes it to the church that we saw in the first scene. So now things are starting to make sense. They get to the church. Uh, Strand's looking everywhere trying to find Thomas because he sees a truck. He recognizes a truck. He's looking for Thomas. He can't find him. All of a sudden, all those poor parishioners that had died are coming back, and they're coming for him. Okay, now this scene's pretty cool. And the reason why this, I mean, I know it's kind of silly that they all these weapons are just laying there, but you got to remember, these people had those weapons before they died. So walkers aren't walking around with bats. So they drop all these weapons. They're there. Everyone picks them up. What I like about this scene is that everyone's evolved. Okay, everyone has now reached that moment where it's no more of, oh, crap, what do I do? It's a, it's time to fight. Yeah. Okay, so I get really excited about this. This whole scene is great. They're fighting. They're taking people out. Um, three things that happen in this scene that I think are really important. One, Nick has a moment where he has to kill a little girl, and he actually is having a hard time with it. Which, I mean, if you saw a little girl zombie, you probably would have a hard time, too. Right. Um, kind of like Rick did in the very first episode of season one. Um, with the little girl, he kind of it took a minute before he finally killed her, but it's it's kind of an intense moment there. And then Sal, uh, Salazar Daniel, he he grabs this one kid who's trying to come at him, and he has a flashback. And in this flashback, it's of someone holding a kid. Now, could he be the one holding the kid, or could he be the kid? I don't know. Um, but I feel like we're gonna find out a little bit more about that, uh, hopefully, in next episode. Um, and then Madison gets attacked. She's kind of in a pinch, and Chris being the little you know what that he By is kind of in a pinch he means on her back with a zombie mounting her and uh 
No, she's she's actually. <laughs> I think she's. I think she's looking straight up. Like she's in a she's in a tough spot. Okay, she's on her back, bro. She's in a the the zombie just put her in a UFC full guard. And, uh, <laughs> he's on top trying to get some of that. Yeah, I mean the zombie's definitely trying to get Madison, and Chris just freezes. But you kind of wonder if maybe he is actually letting her get killed because something that we didn't mention was way back at the very first part of the uh, scene when they're actually on the boat is that he finds out that Madison has told his dad that he killed that guy and he didn't have to. So now he kind of comes across that maybe he's looking at Madison as a threat and in that moment he decides, ah, you know what, this would be an easy fix to my problem. Well, Alicia sees it, flips out on him, goes over and helps her mom, and and he's just standing there looking like a crazy person, and it was weird. I don't know what's up with this kid, man. You know, yeah, it was it was impactful seeing Nick break down the way he did. You know, looking at the kid and everything that you had mentioned. But Chris, man, I don't, what's up with this? Kid? We're going to talk about Chris more um, coming up, but yeah, he was totally like, maybe if the zombie will just bite her, like I'll get slow get. I don't know, man. He he's got to go at this moment. I was like, this kid's got to go. Uh, let's move on to favorite moment number four. And we finally get to um, Herschel's Mexican farm. Uh, <laughs> we roll through the gates. As soon as they did a slow pan of this place, I was like, oh, they're at Herschel's, uh, you know, Mexican relative's house. They actually took set the up. same set and just, just yeah. mixed it up. Yeah. I, it was funny because when I saw it, I was like, this is cool. They'll get to a little safe haven. I don't know why I thought of Herschel's, but I did. And in that, in that moment, I was like, okay, I'm buying it. I'm cool. They just barely had no zombies locked up nowhere. That's what I said. I said, they bet not had no walkers held up somewhere at this place. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, we got there. Um, they <clears> got to <throat> drop their, their weapons and stuff like that. Salazar, he's just like, uh, there's always a need for weapons and, and things like that. But look, he's a guest there. They go in. We meet Celia for the first time. Um, she's talking to Nick. There was an interesting exchange, and I really like it. Because Nick, man, Nick is the focal point in a lot of these episodes. I, I know they are setting this kid up for something big. And he's sitting there eating, and it, Madison comes in. She's always mother hen, you know. She's protecting – she is protecting Nick more from the humans than she is the walkers. And she said something about he's impressionable. And she says, the enlightened ones usually are. And I thought that was uh, interesting because he's definitely open-minded to, you know, explore this world. That's exactly right. Yeah, it was it, that the scene between them was really interesting. And I like that a lot. Um, moving on to the number fifth moment here, which is another scene that takes place. And that is when Alicia kind of has this moment with Chris where Chris kind of says, oh, why are you upset with me? And she's like, uh, what do you think? You about let my mom got killed. Right. He's like, oh, I didn't do that. You know, like, oh, it was an accident. You know, trying to, I'm just completely full of crap. Yeah. And kind of threatens her, like, uh, maybe you shouldn't. Like, he, the way he flips, okay, this is the thing. Like, it's total, like, psycho action. Like, he goes from, oh, I didn't do this to, maybe you should keep your mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? Like, he completely mm -hmm. changes his personalities. And I'm like, uh, somebody needs to kill this guy. And it's kind of getting kind of creepy there. And he has that moment. She flips out. She tells her mom. Then there's an, a, a huge issue between her, Madison, and Travis. Travis like, uh, Travis seems like he's completely lost, okay? okay? It seems like Travis has been playing catch-up for a while. Like, she literally is like, um, something's going on here with your son, Travis. And he's like, oh, yeah, I mean, everything's crazy. You know, like, like he. and then they get into this fight, and I'm just like, Travis, you need to get your head out of your butt. I was like, Travis at this point is getting on my nerves because the dude, he's, he's a patient. Cool. He's, he's, he's useless, too. Go fix a boat. He, he's he's literally has lost like I don't know he's he needs to have that moment where he gets on board because he might be on board where yeah we got to kill zombies but he's not on board with uh anything there's things that aren't right here okay like he just can't seem to make it out but you know it was an interesting scene well with the the thing with Travis was that conversation was so unnatural it didn't even make sense like the argument he was trying to make I was like I was there for your son Nick I was like what is he or you listen to what she's saying. Like, yeah, yeah. I he think made it sound like was Madison to... was wanting to kill him or something. It wasn't a case. Like, Madison's there to help. She's coming to you to let you know there's an issue with your crazy son. We need yeah. to deal with it. It it just didn't, like, it didn't make sense. Uh, it seemed like he was, he, was, he was obviously blinded by the fact that it's his son, completely impartial, because this is his son. Yeah. But was trying to come up with excuses for... Well, you know, he might like to kill people, but your son was on drugs. You know what I'm saying? To us, it's like, uh, what? You know, yeah, I didn't stupid. understand the, the 
where that where that argument was going. But anyway, they separated. She went to go sleep with with Alicia. Let's move on to favorite moment number seven. Strand, six. Or, six, six, six. Oh yeah, six. Sorry, I was jumping on ahead. Sorry. Let's move on to favorite moment number six. And uh, Salazar finds the Walker cage. <laughs> He, he sees this guy throwing a dog or something, a sheep. I don't remember what it was. Throwing something down. At that moment, I was just like, there's walkers down there, and they're feeding them. He goes and talks to the little boy. He's like, I'm talking to my mommy. And uh, he's like, let me see. He goes in. Oh, look, it's a bunch of walkers because everybody thinks they're still alive. They're still there. I don't know what the deal is with, the, with Herschel's farm and this place. And it actually kind of bothered me. I mean, you, you try so hard to separate this show from <clears throat> The Walking Dead and make it its own, and then you go and get a cookie-cutter scene. The, the, the same as from The Walking Dead. And I was just like, why, like we I, do we need this? Like, is there not another way they could they could get this happening? But anyway, yeah, it happened. There, there's it a was, bunch of walkers. It was kind of, it was, it was, I mean, at, at that moment, I think everyone knew when he dropped whatever it was down that thing, you knew, you're like, oh man, they got, they got zombies there too. Wow. This is, I think I've seen this before, you know, mm-hmm. but the interesting thing about it, cause I'm not trying to complain. I understand. I think the, the, the positive way I can try to look at this is that they're in the same boat as very similar to like the way Herschel were at the time. People are still seeing this zombie thing as something that could be cured. They see people, yeah. people they love who are sick, and they're like, they're hoping, they have a hope that that they can be cured. So if it was me, I might take that person and lock them up in the hopes that in a few weeks, maybe I hear, you know, someone from the CDC might show up and say, here, if you have someone who's sick, give them this medicine and it'll cure them. You know, because you're holding out hope. And that's kind of what they're at, which is very similar to like with, with rehearsals. Like they, they still had hope. But for us as an audience, we know that doesn't happen. We know that doesn't exist. Yeah. So they have to get to that point too. So I'm not entirely – it's very similar. Um, they changed it a little bit. Um, but I, I want to see how it plays out. If it plays out differently, completely differently, then I will be okay with it. If it plays out very similar, then, yeah, I might have a little bit more of an issue with it. Um, moving on to uh, 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 <laughs> moment number seven. Um, and that is that, you know, Strand has this kind of pack where, hey, listen, man, we're going to we're going to Romeo and Romeo this thing together. We're going to take, uh, you know, pills and we're going to die together and it's all going to be cool. And then he decides, nah, I'm a survivor. That's not what I do. And Thomas dies. And instead of, you know, letting him die and then taking the, the, the poison uh, wafer, he goes over and shoots him and. That's a big deal because obviously this is his mama's house mm-hmm. and things are about to get hot. And it's funny because those shots are kind of really loud and kicks us off in the moment number eight. Chris, what was my or uh what was that moment? Don't call me Chris. I ain't a psycho. <laughs> Dang. Uh, but uh Rich, you give me the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is standing over a bed with a knife. What's wrong with this kid? Right? Like <laughs> <laughs> what is going like? Okay, look. Let me let me go ahead and break this. Out. I don't think he was in there to try to kill them. That's not what I, I don't think. Chris went in there like I'm just going to stab him in their sleep. There's there's no way he's getting out of that. I don't well, think why did he get the knife? Why did he go over there? I and grab don't know. That's like what I'm saying. Like, walking, I don't know. Like, like, oh look, there's a knife and it's glowing in the sun in the moonlight. I'm going to go pick it up. It's like maybe it's a magical was, knife. Do you think he was ready to run? Do you think he was just getting equipment to go? Was it his knife? Did they take it from? It didn't make sense. But he creeps in. Alicia. Let me creepily get around the bed here and pick up the knife. And then when the gunshots go, he's just standing there looking at him like, nobody holds a knife like that. Like you hold it down by your side or, you know, you're trying to be discreet. He's just holding it like, whatever, dude. Uh, if he was holding the knife like this, and then it's like, oh, no, I was just picking up this knife. That's how I pick up knives. I mean, okay. listen, there's obviously. Bates Motel going on over here. I think there's some deals here, okay? I think that this this moment is supposed to make you think that maybe he wasn't. I honestly believe he is. Okay, you think so? It's right. time that Chris is taken outside and given a look at the flowers moment from Travis and put down. That's how I feel. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, yep. watch Walking Dead. It's time to look at the flowers, Chris. pa plow. Okay, no, that's no. what I think it's time for. I don't think that's going to happen. It's not going to happen. I he... think Chris is going to cause all kinds of bad things to happen. And... I'm kind of sad by this because you kind of there was a moment in in I want to say it was the the moment when they went on land and they found the uh, the wreckage 
that was Chris's moment to go one way or the other. Okay. He gave, he was able to help someone that was sick like his mom. And instead of being like, Dad, I understand. Now I get it. I'm on board. He went, uh, I need to kill everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like he completely went the opposite direction. And it's disappointing because, you know, but at the same time, you kind of understand it because this is something that that happens. We see it in Walking Dead where we meet characters down the road that have gone completely crazy. So we're just getting to see it from the beginning. Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen with Chris, but they're I not, think it's... get rid of him. He's too much of an unknown. If you think back to the episode, like he keeps things on edge as far as like from the audience. You don't know what you're going to get with this kid. You don't mm-hmm. know what's going to happen. And because he's such of an unknown... You, you have to keep him in there, I feel like, at least for a little while. Because think about to that episode, like they were going to trade that dude straight up trade. Well, it got interesting because Chris was freaked out and shot him. And now they ended, it ended up making the episode better. And mm-hmm. so I think they're going to keep him, but he's just not likable. Like you have Shane from, you know, who was nuts and crazy and went off went off his rocker a lot, but he was yeah. still a likable character and a and a bad like he can handle business he was useful chris yeah, hasn't, chris, is, hasn't, chris it hasn't hit that like chris isn't useful at that maybe that's the reason why we kind of feel like yeah. okay Kat, it's time for chris yeah, to, to be cool. done what would be interesting is what if um you know they completely kind of flip you know and he doesn't they don't work with him let's say he runs away from this and he ends up turning into a bad guy and uh maybe he even meets up with uh uh Oh, Alice? Was that her name? What was it? What's the chick's name? Alex. From the, Alex, Alex from the wreckage. Like maybe he meets up with her because I don't think she's out of the. I, she'll show up again. What if Chris gets away and meets up with her, and then they kind of become like uh, like this evil duo? You know what I'm saying? And then we meet up with Chris later on, and there's this epic. Now that would be cool. I would be Crazy okay with zombie that. Bonnie and Clyde running around killing people. I would be. I'd be okay with that to make it interesting. We get away from Chris for a while. We don't have to see him every episode, but in the meantime, he's developing into this evil guy. And then we have an ultimate, you know, confrontation later on. But anyway, that's our thoughts. Those are our favorite moments from this episode. Look, we like this show. It is picking up. It is getting better. It did bother me that they did so, so close to what we've seen from The Walking Dead. But we get the finale, I think, next week. I think we'll stay the same. But anyway, let us know in the comment section below what was your favorite moment from this episode. Give this video a like. You know, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, guys, we're out. See ya.